Hey guys, what's up? This is Sean from SeanDahl.com and today I'm going to be showing you how I edit one of my photos for Instagram. Uh, I've been getting a lot of buzz, a lot of you guys are messaging me saying, you know, how do I edit these photos? Uh, well, I do sell Lightroom presets to edit my photos, uh, but you know what? Not everyone wants to buy them and uh, I want to make this doable for everybody. So I'm going to show you how I edit uh, this photo into something like this. And you can see here, this is my signature blue tone that I think a lot of people really like. I have a lot of kind of blues in the shadows and just an overall blue tone, a little bit crisper. Um, definitely my style. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. So let's reset the photo and let's begin. Um, here I'm in the develop tab. Uh, I have all my settings here. Everything's at zero. First thing I'm going to do is align the photo. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and I'm going to go down here and just straighten the coffee cup out a little bit. Hit enter, looks much better already, just the angle. Um, okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the basic adjustments. Basic adjustments are like, you know, exposure, contrast, highlights, basic lighting, basic saturation and vibrance and stuff like that. For most of my photos, I drop the highlights, maybe about 30, and I raise the shadows about also about 30. So what, what this is doing is it's pulling out detail in the highlight areas as well as the shadow areas. So if I drop highlights all the way, look at all the detail that we are coming out of like this area. There's not a lot of highlights in this photo, so it's not a really good example, but if you had a really bright scene, that, that's uh, something you can do is drop the highlights and pull out a lot more detail there. Um, but in this situation, we do have a lot of shadows. So watch, watch what happens when I bring this all the way up to 100. Look how much detail comes out here in the bottom of the stool here and on the wall. Um, on the contrary, if I drop it all the way down, look how dark that gets. So I do like having kind of dark photos. Uh, my theme is kind of dark, so I don't want to go overboard on that. But I am going to go up to 30 just to kind of flatten the tone out a little bit. Um, I like doing that. Um, and for the whites and the blacks, this is just affecting the whites and the blacks. So no color in this situation. I'm going to drop it 10 and I'm going to go up. I'll go up like five or so. Um, so we can come back to these later, you know, once we mess with the more advanced stuff and that's what we're gonna do. Um, but the next thing we're gonna do, uh, and this is kind of where you get the blue tone, is we're gonna mess with the tone curve. And the tone curve is kind of confusing for a lot of people and it was confusing for me for a long time. Um, and it took me a long time to kind of figure out how it worked. But essentially uh, the tone curve is affecting the colors and the lighting in the image um, kind of on a deeper level. So I'm gonna click to edit the point curve. And what we have here is the different channels of color, red, green, and blue. There's RGB, this affects all three of them evenly. And then you have red, this affects only the red channels, only the green channels, and only the blue channels. So essentially every color in your photo is made up of a combination of these three colors in some way or another. And when you affect, when you change the settings on these channels, you're effectively changing the colors as a whole in the image. Um, so in order to get the kind of blue tone that I really like, what I do is I drop the greens and the reds, and I also drop the blues, but I don't drop them as much. So one thing to note on this tone curve is you have like these squares here, and that's a really good way to track what you're doing um, and how to stay consistent on all three channels if you want to keep it consistent. So I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to click right here just below the, where these, these two lines intersect and I'm going to bring it down. Look at the image change. Look how much greens and blues are coming out more when I drop the red channels. I'm going to drop it right about there. So it's like halfway in the middle square. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to raise this. And it's starting to look a little bit more normal. And I'm just going to go like right above this here. Okay, so that's the red channel. Now look at how much less reds there are. And it's also affecting the lighting. See how the image is getting a little bit more uh, darker? Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing on the green channel. I'm going to bring this down. I think it was like right about there. And then the same thing here. Raise this up here, something like that. Okay. Now we have a lot of blues in the image, which is awesome because that's the tone that I like. So then I'm gonna come into the blue blue curve and I'm gonna do the same thing, but 
less. I'm not going to go all the way down where I had it the last time on the other ones. And uh, I'm going to raise this one just really not a lot because I got my blue tone. I got the tone that I really like. The colors are where I want them for the most part. We're going to do more adjustments later. But now you guys can see the image is a little bit dark. Like it's too dark, you know, the... So I'm gonna go back to RGB, this affects all three channels, and I'm gonna raise this up a little bit this way. Now what this is doing is it's flattening out the shadows. So look at these dark areas here, and watch me raise this bar here. Now look how much detail is coming out, but it's really, really flattening the image out. And I like that flat look, a lot of people like that flat look. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise it maybe like right here, and then I'm gonna take this one, and this is gonna flatten the highlights out. So, I don't want to do that too much because we don't really have a lot of highlights in the image, so I don't really think it's necessary. Um, but this is, I think, a better look, or even a little bit more. Okay, so now we got that nice soft look. Uh, but you know what? I think the highlights are dropped a little bit, so I'm gonna go back up here and mess with that. I kind of raise that a little bit, maybe raise the the whites a little bit, just kind of brighten the image a little bit because it's a little bit dark in my opinion. Um, what I also like to do is just mess with the exposure. So I'm gonna do 0 0.30. Okay, that's pretty bright, maybe a little bit too bright. Um, so I'm gonna drop that, highlights a little bit. Okay, so now that we've brightened up our image, we can see our colors a little bit more. And for me, I don't know, it just seems a little bit warm. Um, so instead of going back to the tone curve, because we did most of what we wanted to do there, you can simply mess with the color temperature here. And uh, right now we're at 4,500, it's pretty warm. I'm gonna go down to 4,400. Okay, a little bit cooler, a little bit of a cooler tone there, I see. That's, I personally like that better. So we're gonna leave that there, raise the highlights a little bit more. Okay, you know what? I think that's pretty good for, for now. So now we're gonna come down to the color spectrum. And what basically this does is um, you can you, you have complete control over all of your colors. It's pretty awesome. So this is the hue. If you change the hue, it's actually changing the, the colors. It's actually changing the color I mean, completely. So you see here, if I, if I mess with the oranges, I can make them more yellow. Or I can make them more red, which is pretty cool. Uh, in this situation, I'm going to go a little bit this way because when you make it more red, you're pulling out browns a little bit more. And I want to pull out those browns in this chair and in this latte. That looks pretty cool. Yellow, um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop the hue, maybe minus 10. I'm going to do both of them minus 10 because I like that deep brown, that deep brown look. Green, you know, we don't really have a lot of greens in the image, so it's not something you have, really have to worry about. Uh, if you do have greens in the image and you want to get deeper greens, you can go this way. Or if you want to have more yellow greens, you can go that way. Uh, aquas. Uh, we do have some aquas in the photos. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but if you look in the in this white area here, um, when I bring the aqua to the green side, it gets much more of a turquoise look. And in this specific photo, I'm not really feeling that. I'm liking the deep blues. So I'm going to take this aqua slider and I'm going to go to the right a little bit and get a little bit more of those deep blues out. Awesome. And for the blue slider here, we do have a lot of blues in the image. And you can see, once again, the aquas, if I go to the left, look at all that teal, that turquoise. And I do like that color a lot, but for this photo, I want deeper blue. So I'm going to go towards the magenta side here. And then we have uh, purples um, and pink. So you can go to the left to get purple, to the right to get pink. Um, it's not going to affect our photo too much, but I'm going to go just maybe minus six or so. Magenta, same kind of thing. Uh, there are magentas in the photos, but these are the kind of colors that you can't really see too well because we're working with deeper tones here. You know, we're not working with these bright colors. So in this situation, I can't even see what it's doing. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it in the middle. Oh shoot, undo that. Leave that in the middle, and that should be good. Saturation is just the saturation of the color. So another way to get a deeper brown is to actually desaturate some of the reds or the oranges, and um, that kind of gets a, a deeper brown color. Um, 
Same with the yellows here. I don't want to take out too many yellows because I kind of like the, the yellow menu and then there's yellow in here too and I kind of like that. So I'm going to leave, leave that there. Greens, if there were greens in the photos, I really do like to desaturate the greens because it really flattens out some of the plants and plants can be kind of distracting sometimes. But this photo doesn't have that, so I'm just going to leave it. We have the aqua slider here for the saturation. I'm going to leave it because I do want to keep some aquas. And then we've got the blue, right? And there is a lot of blue in this photo. You guys can see there, look how much blue is in the photo. And I like those blues. So I'm going to bring it up to maybe plus six. Uh, purples. I don't have a lot of purples. Leave that there. I uh, don't have a lot of magentas either. Leave that there. Luminance. So this is going to change the brightness of the colors. So here the photo is a little bit dark and um, I do want to raise some of the highlights a little bit, right? Some of the light a little bit. So I can take the blues. Uh, another trick, guys, if, if you don't know what specific color something is, you can click this, this little slider area here, and then you can go to an area in the photo and then you can click and hold and move up or down. And then look, you can see on the right here, this is affecting the oranges and the yellows because those are the two sliders that are moving. So you can see we still do have a lot of oranges and yellows in the photos. Uh, more oranges than yellows. And I'm going to bring these up a little bit. Just a little bit, not too much because I don't want to get too much highlights here. I'm going to hit enter there. Uh, and then these other ones. Let me bring them down a little bit. This is just kind of for everyone to mess around with. You guys can mess around with this. Um, it's going to be different for every photo. But for the purposes of this photo, for that nice blue tone, this is kind of what I'm following. So let's stop for a second, and I'm going to hit the uh, backslash key on my keyboard, and we'll look at the before, and here's the after. Before and after. So we've got that nice blue tone. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the split toning here. I'm going to come down to the detail. Um, the noise is good. I shot this at uh, ISO 1000 on the A7R2. This camera can handle high ISOs like that. There's not a lot of noise in the image. Uh, if you have an older camera, you might have some noise. Not a bad thing. Noise is kind of cool looking, in my opinion. So um, you don't have to add grain. Some people will come down to the effects and they'll add grain a little bit. Sometimes I do that because I think that looks pretty cool. Not going to do it in this situation, though. Anyways, let's get back up here. So we just messed with the colors. We're going to skip the, uh, the split toning. We're going to skip the detail. I don't want to do anything here. I don't want to do any noise reduction. Lens correction. I don't want to do a lens correction because it's going to get rid of my vignetting and I like the vignette look because I, I shot this uh, almost wide open at 1.6. Um, I could have shot it at 1.4. Um, and that allowed me to get this nice out of focus background here and keep the focus on the cup. Um, I do like to click remove chromatic aberration and what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of some of the colored lines that form on the high contrast points. Uh, in this photo, there's not a lot. My lenses are uh, pretty high quality, so I don't suffer from a lot of chromatic aberration. But if you're shooting into the sun or you're shooting into a really bright window, you might have it like on the on the creases here. So that's something to look for, and this really does a great job of removing it. Um, we already kind of messed with the crop, so I'm not going to mess with that here. Uh, a highlight, the vignetting. One thing you can do is you can you can add some vignetting. I do like to do that, and what this, that'll do is I'll put the focus on the cup here. I can make these areas a little bit darker, so. Maybe drop it just a little bit, like minus five, and then I can move the midpoint. So I'm not going to do it too much, but yeah, it stops right about here, right on the chair. I'm not going to add grain. <clears throat> and here, so now you're affecting the camera cal calibration, the color calibration, and this can have a lot of effects on the colors of your photos. Uh, and my best recommendation here is just to play with it. So when I come to the left here, we're pulling into some reds. Um, and these are affecting the, the primary channel. So similar to what we were doing in the tone curve, um, these are just sliders. Uh, I'm just going to mess with it. I kind of want to go this way, pull out some browns. Yeah, look at that. Look at the nice yellows coming out in that cup here. Uh, and then in terms of saturation, maybe go, maybe go right there. I'm not, not really change it. I think that's fine. Greens, um, leave that in the middle. 
Could be go up 25 as well. Um, I'm not going to desaturate that. The blues, once again, um, we're going to stick to the deeper blues here. And uh, maybe just a little bit because, yeah, that's nice. Um, desaturate. Maybe just minus, minus four or something like that. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to take any out. I think that looks cool. Okay, now that we've done that, um, now that I'm looking at the photo, I do notice that it is a little bit dark, a little bit too dark. So I'm actually going to take this exposure and bring it all the way up to like 0 0.60, 0 0.65. I know that looks really bright. Uh, and we're going to lower the highlights a little bit more to make it soft again. Um, and there, there's the before and there's the after. I like that much better. It's just brighter and, uh, and it, yeah, it's much better. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here on the cup. I'm going to click here and, uh, I'm going to click clarity. All right. And bring the clarity up to like maybe 30. And, uh, I'm going to bring out some more detail in the actual latte. So the, the latte it's hard to get your camera to focus on the actual latte art. I struggle with that in this photo. So the clarity will increase contrast on the micro level in between the lines. So that'll make it look like it's a little bit more sharp. I can even bring it up to like 40. Uh, and then I'm gonna bring the sharpness up a little bit too. Don't wanna do too much because look how much noise it makes. Look at all the little dots. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. So I'll bring it up to like um, and then you can do dehaze too. Dehaze is a really cool effect, but in my opinion, it makes it a little bit too dark. So I don't want to make it too dark. I'm going to go like just 12, just like yeah, 14. Boom, hit enter, fit, go to the main display. Boom. It's awesome. I love this. So I'm going to go ahead and post this on Instagram. Once again, before. After, nice deep blue tones. We'll go full screen so you guys can see it. Awesome. Uh, with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I know it was a long video, but I hope you guys found it useful. If you do like it, please uh, leave a comment and give me a thumbs up. If you, if you don't like it, go ahead and give me a down vote. That's okay, too. Um, if you guys buy my presets or if you use this guide to edit your photos, please tag me in your photos. I want to see what you guys are coming up with. I love chatting with you. Um, and I learn a lot from you guys too, so feel free to reach out. Um, with that said, thank you guys so much, and I will definitely see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.